I'm going to bring up uh, Victoria Wu. She is uh, an investment partner at Tencent Explorations. She's also been the director. She is the director of their international business strategy. She helped uh, WeChat's uh, launch WeChat strategy for the United States. She has been in the past the fundraising head of the Nature Conservancy's North Asian uh, North Asia arm, and she has something perhaps to do about uh, bringing on Jack Ma to head up the, na uh, the Nature Conservancy, something like that. And she probably has something to do with the founder of uh, Tencent, Pony Ma, getting on the board of the Nature Conservancy in China. Um, she's also been a TV anchor woman in China and uh, many, many other things. So how about a big hand for Victoria Wu? Thank you so much for Monica's uh, um, introduction. That's really kind of her to mention all that. And I uh, want to thank uh, 1990 and Monica for inviting me. This is truly an honor for me, and I'll tell you um, why. And I want to thank all of you taking time uh, from your busy summer and not going on vacation with your family, but being here. And it really um, means a lot to everyone in China. I think all the new young generation here as well. Um, so a little bit background of me, I was uh, uh, made in China, grew up in China, and uh, <laughs> I came here um, for my graduate study at uh, Stanford. Um, and then I went back to China. Uh, so I worked here for, about in consulting in uh, my own startups and also pharmaceutical company um, in South San Francisco. So for about uh, like six years, and then I went back to China um, for nonprofit organization and Tencent. Uh, and uh, that's during this whole process, I think I kind of, although I'm always been doing things that's related to China and the US, but I think Part of me, I kind of forgot the reason I came to the US. And uh, um, at 99 Institute, when I started to really get to know what they're doing and also what you guys are doing um, since last year, it reminded me of my dreams before. And when I wrote my personal statement, when I applied for Stanford, um, the kind of the opening statement was, I, the reason I want to come here is uh, to um, start building the bridge between the US and China and become and contribute to the, to the cultural exchange and business exchange. And of course, like my secret reason is I just want to travel. I just want <laughs> to know and uh, what it's like, how people live their lives here. And uh, so that was in my personal statement and that's how I got into Stanford, but I forgot about it along the way. And uh, so, um, and now I get to pick it up again and really um, like uh, just being part of you guys and uh, it's really feels v extremely meaningful for me. And uh, so I want to, so today I want to talk about three things. One is an introduction about um, China's internet industry, about Tencent, about WeChat. And number two is to uh, really um, kind of how, why this uh, is important for the students here. And, uh, and then the third one would be to give you a couple of tips for people who might be going on to the trip to China and uh, how you can utilize the technology to make your life easier over there. And uh, so um, how many of you know about Tencent? Mm -hmm. Heard about Tencent? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, um, I know that David and Jessica did a great job mentioning about WeChat, so now I have to revise my question. How many of you heard about WeChat before this conference? Okay, um, thank you. And uh, so, um, oh, where's the, it's this one, right? Yeah. Uh, did I turn it off? <laughs> okay, here. So, um, WeChat, most of you heard about WeChat, and a lot of uh, people, and most of the people here uh, only know about WeChat. WeChat is actually um, part of the Tencent product. And Tencent started uh, about 18 years ago, and uh, we, um, most of people know us as QQ, which is a messenger app. It's a free messenger, it's just like uh, people used a long time ago, like MSN Messenger, AOL Messenger, and uh, so build upon that as a communication, about 95% of Chinese are all on QQ Messenger. 
um, which is uh, PC-based. It's not mobile-based. And then along the way, so our founder, as Monica mentioned, Ponima, he, um, he had this philosophy or vision that just like any community, it should be a one-stop shop also for Tencent. So we have, you have laundromat, you have a movie theater, um, you have restaurants, everything um, on, in your community. At the same time, also we should have, um, like you should be able to do your e-commerce shopping, you should be able to chat with your friends, family, and uh, also uh, play games, listening to music, all at one stop. So that's why Tencent is kind of very different. This is, uh, so we are uh, one of the largest uh, internet company in the world uh, behind uh, Google, Amazon, and uh, Facebook, so the number four at this moment. And so what we do is very different from any other internet company um, in the world um, outside of China. So what makes it different is we do almost everything. So search, e-commerce, communication, gaming. Uh, we're also one of the, uh, we're also the largest gaming company in the world, and most of people don't know that. That's how we able to uh, that's our biggest revenue source, actually, from gaming. That's how we are able to fund WeChat and really do this, all these core cool products and bring, uh, make people's life easier. And uh, so that, so his vision brought us to like, so he started building all of the products we listed here from communication. We have QQ, WeChat, um, and Tencent Gaming, and also Tencent Video, which is, equivalent of like you can think of it as YouTube plus Hulu. So it has user generated content and also the um, um, movies and the TV shows. So that's uh, um, Tencent Video is also 80% so of the products here you see um, is number one in the Asia region. And uh, there's also portal type of business. So like a QQ.com, which is the equivalent of you can think of it as uh, Yahoo.com. And there's also payment, which is extremely important for, for us and uh, to build an ecosystem and to have enable people to pay on WeChat, on QQ. And I was like, you will show, you will see that in the video I will play how it make people's life completely different from um, how, you, how Americans live their life here. And it will be really critical for the people who are traveling to China and uh, one of the really interesting article, um, I think in TechCrunch recently, a reporter went to China and he didn't have any money in his WeChat. And he was, he was paying in, the star, uh, in like a Starbucks and was treated like a second class citizen. Like everybody, even a grandma using WeChat paying. But this is just a joke, right? It's like, it's not really, it's, he was just, uh, he was really just being playful there. I don't think anybody will be um, too embarrassed to pay with cash or credit card either. Um, but it's just, you can see how uh, dominant the mobile payment is in China. And uh, um, what's the, okay, now, um, so there's also, um, we also have an app store in China, which is kind of equivalent of uh, uh, um, Apple store in China. So all the apps you can download from Tencent platform. Um, so I think one of the most um, familiar, the, the product you're familiar with is WeChat. And how many of you have, uh, I know that Monica already did the poll, how many of you have WeChat? Yeah, and then how, who here knows about a feature called uh, Radar? Mm -hmm. You, one, two, yeah. Um, and uh, so this is a really cool function. And the reason I'm bringing, I'm talking about this function is very, it's one of the um, examples why WeChat got successful. The re um, it's because um, all the really cool innovative features. For example, if you have a group of room of people here, and then how are you going to, if you exchange, how do you get to know everyone? And in, uh, in like, say, uh, 10 seconds, how do you get all of the contacts information? Anyone have any solution? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, besides radar. <laughs> and, uh, so um, inside WeChat, so you can just click a button, and then you can detect everybody in the room in one, like in the in a certain area, say like 10, 20 meters in a room, and then you get their contacts information instantly. 
And that's how, that's we um, started so that, because people st in China started to stop, you, um, they stopped using business cards and they just exchange, uh, em they don't really use email address and they meet each other, they say, what's your WeChat? And they just scan each other's uh, WeChat QR code. But that's still very slow. So it will take an hour for you, for you to walk around the room to meet everyone to scan their QR code. So that's why we invented the radar. You just click a button, everyone at the same time, and then you are all included in the same group. And it doesn't mean that uh, um, privacy is always the number one thing for us as well. So it doesn't mean that you are connected um, with the, like each single one of them. You are just in a group. And if you want to um, be uh, contacted by like individual, individually connected, then you need to get that person's permission still. But now at least you're in your group, you can do announcement, you can play games there. Um, it's very easy to get connected. And also there's other, Yeah, yeah, of course. Let's do an experiment. So if you open your WeChat, and uh, for the for the people ha who has it, um, just uh, in your um, okay. in your chat, do you um, on the right top right corner? There's a plus button. Mm -hmm. If you click on it, there's uh, add contacts. Click on it. And then the first one is friend radar. So click on that now. I see Jin, He Jin. And then I see James, I see Gail, I see Clara, Monica, Winnie, and uh, Bai. Yeah. <laughs> Here, yeah. So now you can just click on the people who you want to be connected with and then add them. So then now you're connected. So just click on add, and then you are all, um, so then you, you can keep in, uh, keep in touch with each other in the future. <laughs> I can show you a lot of other really innovative functions um, about WeChat here too, and then we're going to play for like hours and hours on WeChat. Uh, but I know that you guys need to go to dinner, go to airport, so I will save it for the next time. And so there's also another function um, which was uh, not, uh, which is like a function we released in the very beginning. And three functions made us super popular. Why is a friend nearby? You can click on the nearby uh, button and find people just around here and using WeChat. You can see how close they are to you, if they are 0 0.1 mile uh, or if they are five miles away. So you can see if your boss is close by and then <laughs> if you, at the same time, you can see like if there's uh, someone like a boy, a girl you're interested close by to. And that leads to my next topic is why it's relevant to your students. And so WeChat becomes so successful. It's not just, chi it's not built by, um, like our team is not just all Chinese. And then for example, there are a lot of contributors who grew up in America also contributed greatly to this product. For example, our, one of our key product manager who is uh, um, so um, uh, Luke Othwin, he grew up in California, went to Harvard, and uh, he was one of the first product manager in our team. And he actually used the nearby function on the first day he was at WeChat. And that, that was like right after he graduated from Berkeley. Um, I, uh, sorry, he went to Berkeley instead. And, uh, and, and then on the first day, he was just trying out all the um, functions. And on the nearby, he found he started chatting with the girl and who was nearby. And now they are engaged and married. <laughs> and <laughs> after three years at WeChat. So, um, and then there's also Dan Grover, one of our uh, product manager from Northeastern University here. Now he just recently joined uh, uh, Facebook too. And there's also Stephen Wong, who was the CTO of uh, Rotten Tomato, if you guys know him. So I think the innovation has no border. And uh, everyone contributes um, and enjoy to a great product. And so that, and they are also revolutionized leading um, the way people live, the, uh, live their lives on WeChat. 
So um, a couple of tips before we get to the video uh, for the people who are going on to the China trip. Um, one is use the translation uh, for a feature Monica mentioned. That's not just to between English and Chinese, which will make your life extremely easy, much easier. And also it translates many other languages as well. Um, so you can talk with anyone in the world uh, without difficulty. So you can just hold the chat content and then there, was, uh, there will be a button come out that says translate. And click on that, it will translate for you in a second. And uh, another thing is, um, actually one of my uh, American friend here told me about, he said that um, he regretted he didn't get any money for, her Wech for his WeChat account before he went to China last month. And uh, he could not pay for anything and he could not, uh, because he doesn't have a bank account in China, he could not really transfer money into it too. So one of the um, tip he had for anyone who travel in China is to just ask one of your Chinese friend and give you a gift, like it's called a red envelope. So, or just using the transfer money function, give you like $200 or um, anything. So then it, which will make your life much easier. Paying for taxi and going to restaurants. Um, and it's uh, uh, just like having any kind of fun. And WeChat is not just, because WeChat is not just a communication tool in China. It has become a platform. Um, it's what, what that means is in the US, we use uh, uh, Uber to get a taxi. We use Simless to order food. And we use all different, we use Seesaw for homework. Um, and you have all different type of apps for each vertical function. But in China, it's a one-stop shop again. It's you go to WeChat, do, from the morning, you're reading your news, getting a taxi, and uh, to getting a cup of coffee, to um, go to like do your online shopping and uh, getting your lunch to the evening and you started uh, reading news or um, watch some videos for entertainment. Everything is on WeChat. So that's what make it uh, um, really interesting and dominant in China. Um, so that's my tips for the China trip. And for it's, it's very abstract to talk about an uh, app. And but, uh, so I want to show you some videos of how people use WeChat in real life in China. This uh, documentary was made by Discovery Channel um, recently. The scale of development in China is like nowhere else on Earth. But this rapidly modernizing landscape comes with its own costs. Once close-knit communities are being separated by urban migration. In this vast country, it can be a challenge to stay in touch. New media has jumped on the opportunity to bridge that gap. One company is solving China's problem of alienation by bringing people back together virtually. Three years ago, a small group of Chinese entrepreneurs invented something called WeChat. This mobile-only social media platform now has 400 million active monthly users and literally two-thirds of the entire country has a WeChat account. WeChat isn't your average messaging app. Their innovations have fundamentally changed the way Chinese communicate and interact online and off. Popular functions include moments and Shake Shake, both of which are social media platforms unique to WeChat. But their most transformative feature has been voice messaging. WeChat popularized voice messaging. Now, text messaging in Chinese is laborious. So WeChat found a way for people to send voice memos instead. It's now a ubiquitous form of communication throughout the country. So in a sense, your invention, your creation of this voice memo yeah. took the challenge of the Chinese typing yeah. and gave people an alternative. It changed the way of the Chinese user, how they use the mobile phone. Ever since the voice message, we kept changing the behavior of Chinese user. 
WeChat's innovations have created a digital bridge for populations and cultures that are new to social media. Inspired by the pictorial nature of the Chinese language, the company has embraced a logic of visual communication that has gone global. Now, what does a surprised bunny, a naked frog, and a flaming horse have in common? Generally speaking, practically nothing. However, if you're Chinese and you use WeChat, these stickers are rapidly becoming a new form of communication. Stickers are animated standalone expressions. And because they're not tied to any specific alphabet, they can transcend language. So who's that koala? Momo. Momo goes to the movies. Momo drinks a pina colada. Momo gets hammered and passes out. Why do you think stickers have taken off as much as they have in China? Uh, actually, you know, some people may still think that's uh, just animation, right? But we actually advanced that to a new language. No matter what language you talk, English, Chinese, you know, you can use this to express all the world, you know, they can understand you. But that's universal language, right? Stickers are both limitless and completely customizable. They can represent virtually anything. <laughs> There's just a sort of point in time when you know you've made it. You've just, you've done all you're going to do and you've sort of achieved that goal and it's time to retire. And uh, this is that moment for me. I am an emoticon. For WeChat, the entire country is like a gigantic playground and test lab where they're able to observe and engage with a rapidly evolving society. Their goal is to continue to invent novel ways for users to connect with one another. More and more people are moving to the big cities from small cities. So they will find very difficulty meeting new friends, talking to their old friends. Everything in the big city, the life is too difficult for them. So the way to connect is not necessarily obvious to everyone. And then all of a sudden, WeChat comes around at the exact right moment. Yes, that's how the story happened. Today, their innovations are creating even more solutions to relieve the stresses caused by China's rapid urbanization. But they aren't limiting themselves to the virtual world. What is this mess of objects I see here? Uh, this, uh, all of the hardware devices connecting to the WeChat, we are doing exploration here. Can you give me a sense of like what you guys are trying to, to sort of hack into? So, Beetle, you're going to open up your WeChat account? Yeah. I can only imagine what kind of pictures you have on there from the weekend, Beetle. From, ooh, that was a fun night, huh? I don't know who that is. She's pretty cute. Is that your girlfriend? My wife. Okay, cool. My bad. Um, okay, so anyway, and if you want to send these pictures to, say, your grandmother, yeah, because she was lo she loves your new wife, she wants to see pictures of you and your new wife, yeah, you give her the gift of the picture frame, yeah, and then how do you send her the pictures of you guys? I just pick a picture and choose it. So I send through the WeChat. Hey. And so there you are. There's you and your lovely wife. So grandma's hanging at home. She says, how's Beetle? So happy he found someone he loves. So his grandma is hanging out by herself, wondering, what is he doing today? Is he having a good time? Bang! It is a kind of, I mean, it is, it's, it's, we're being silly about it, but it is a kind of a really, like my grandmother would have loved to have this. I think this is an amazing, interesting way to involve someone who can't physically be here, but let them know what you're up to. What's your grandma's name? Uh, my grandma's name is... Sue. <laughs> <laughs> <It's two. laughs> <laughs> <It's two. laughs> Case in point. If, if ever there was evidence of a cultural crisis, I just asked Beetle his grandmother's name. You know what he said? He had to think about it. You're forgetting your grandmother's name. You've got to get this to her as soon as possible, otherwise you're going to break the bonds of your family connection. <laughs> I'm adding Beetle. I turned on my friend radar, and I just got four new WeChat friends like that. Look at this. So there's a lot more. Um, there's, you, can, you guys can go on to YouTube. There's uh, uh, other about six minutes. We only played half of it. So to give you kind of a flavor of how people use WeChat every day in China. And, um, like the last part of the video, so not only 
people use uh, WeChat on their mobile to do communication, entertainment, but also they're all, um, it's connected to, to a lot of internet of things as well, to a lot of hardware. For example, one is the uh, photo frame, and that's one of our early products. And uh, um, there's also it also it's also connected to smart home. For example, um, one of the, um, the top AC manufacturer they put a, a WeChat QR code on every unit of their um, AC unit. And uh, when you go to, when you buy it when you first set it up, you just take out your WeChat and scan the QR code on the AC unit. And now you have a remote control on your phone. So before you get to your home, you're in your office, I am going to, um, yeah, to adjust the temperature to 68 degrees so I, it can be cool when I get home or it can, I can warm it up. So there, there are many things like this in China. And uh, um, it's also not only smart home, there's also smart city and uh, smart campus. So that's the next uh, um, topic I want to get into. Uh, a little bit, so to, um, I think it's probably the most relevant to, to everyone who's sitting here. How uh, many of you use uh, apps um, for your classroom management or communication? Yeah, okay. And what uh, product do you use here? Mm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Are those uh, mm, for administration or for homework? Or what uh, do you mainly use it for? Mm -hmm. I've heard those for um, recording behavior and like getting points for certain behaviors and recording pictures of what you're doing in the classroom for kids. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, my little one is a little to message, teach about how to get their emoji to message. So yeah. Third party messaging, just recording stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and then, re okay, got you. Um, thank you very much. Um, we have, uh, I think, Lily prepared some gift for you too, <laughs> uh, for both of you. Um, and so that just very similar. So it's this is something you can everyone and also the students here can all relate to. In China, uh, smart campus and uh, um, to increase the to improve and facilitate the communication between parents and uh, teacher between kids. Uh, and teacher, and it's to help with administration, everything is m more and more popular now. So that's when, um, so that's when you, so this is a for a uh, uh, use case for in campus. When you, on the first day you go to college and you, can, you, re you receive a welcome message, you register everything and you buy books you buy your grocery shop, you do your grocery shopping, everything on the smart campus tool. And now you, he, she just paid for it. So that's the map for um, the campus. And she sees who is also in her dorm, the same which her roommate, she already knows it. And she used the phone to open the dorm. <laughs> And concert, and you can share share the pictures, all the um, and send it to your parents, and share it with your classmates what you're doing. You invite them to different events. So you can also. Um, find classrooms, so now you are, so, um, he just got the notification of his next class is coming up, so he wouldn't miss his class. And here's uh, how the teachers take attendance. So you have one minute window to click on the button to show that your attendance. <laughs> <laughs> and if someone is late, and he just missed the window. <laughs> So now this is a test, this is a poll, a question that teacher can do interactions with the students inside the class and you get the result right away. And uh, reading news on the smart, about the campus, about the local news. You can also register class, you can find the electives. 
um, and uh, sending your homework. Now you can, uh, he's ordering his lunch right after class. So this is a communication with the president of the school, of the university. He's saying the um, tomato, the potato and uh, beef stew today has very little beef. <laughs> and the president replied back, okay, I'll be there in 10 minutes to try it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he sent um, his classmates an uh, invitation for, um, for a party in the evening. And here's his, all his schedule on the Smart uh, Campus app. So he can select the, and select the class, and that the last picture was actually uh, um, to reserve your spot in a classroom. Because in China, it's like there's library always short of spots. So people have to go there really early to reserve a spot to study in the evening. So now you can just reserve it on the mobile. Yeah. <laughs> so that actually ends my presentation. And uh, um, I'm sure you guys uh, have a lot of questions which will um, be answered on your China trip, and you will have a lot of fun. And uh, um, if you have any other questions I can help out with here, I think I have still have a couple minutes. Um, yeah. Anybody? That, that's a phenomenal presentation. Phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. Monica? So how is WeChat used in high school? Yep. Is uh, a smart campus app also? Uh, it's a version. That's a, that's a great question. Actually, the smart campus is uh, designed for all different stages from um, daycare to college. And so and every version is foc has different focuses. For example, in the kindergarten, they don't we don't really expect the kids to use the little ones to use a, um, use, a, uh, use a cell phone. So it's more focused on tracking them and uh, a safety around the campus. Um, so they have a, like a virtual uh, digital guard, digital campus guard, and to know where every kids are, and also for administration. And uh, for the elementary school, um, it's more about the engagement between the parents and teacher and kids. And for the um, for to go um, getting to high school, it's uh, about homework. It's about administration. And then when in college, as you see, um, the video is more focused on college. It's about more about administration and classrooms and also a lifestyle, just to having fun in college as well. No. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of logistical questions, but I won't ask them all. But yeah. one of the big questions I have was, does WeChat have its own bank, or is it connected to your personal um, financial account? How does the, the exchange of money work? Yeah, that's a, a very good question about the logistics, how it actually works. So, so you, um, it's, like a, it's, it's like a PayPal. So we have a, our own banking license as well. And uh, we have a, a bank called WeBank. But usually you would do what you can do is you just use it like, like a PayPal. You connect your uh, banking account, so debit card or credit card or from any bank to WeChat and deposit money into WeChat. Then you can use it uh, anywhere you want. Uh, yes, I, I was just curious because, I mean, it's, it's doing a lot. Is yep. all of that self-contained in the app or is it served more as a portal that interfaces with, say, the university's websites or the restaurant's website? I mean, it was a yep. phenomenal amount of content if yeah. just in one yeah. source. That's actually, you, that's very, that's very good question because it's the, in the video it only showed you the mobile interface. There's a PC interface for um, the school, how you manage it and everything. And this is not, I uh, need to clarify, this is not a WeChat product, it's a, a Tencent product. So it also has uh, many aspects. WeChat is only part of it. 
and uh, um, there's many things that cannot be just realized by WeChat. Otherwise, the mobile app would be too heavy. Uh. So is there mm -hmm. Uh, no, not yet. So we released the Smart Campus uh, um, in 2015. So, and then um, there's a, a lot of major universities uh, already signed up. And uh, um, it's always, we all, um, it's Tencent, any Tencent product benefits from our leading position in the country already. So it's because, just because every user already have WeChat or QQ on their phone, so it makes it much easier for the, uh, for the, um, for the um, adoption. And uh, there are many other apps to help uh, um, the teachers to manage different aspects as well, just like what uh, um, the, some of the teachers already mentioned, like Reminder, and there's also Seesaw. There's many apps here. There's many, many apps in China as well. And uh, certain regions, uh, uh, certain school district, the, um, mat, uh, the sometimes they're like my cousin's uh, um, kids' school, and the man, the um, ask the teacher require teacher requires the parents to install certain type of app, and uh, mm, many apps are focused on one vertical area. For example, homework. For example, tracking. For example, just picture sharing for activities. And uh, the Smart Campus is uh, a platform that uh, um, has many like very a very comprehensive function at the same time it's also an open platform so other services can also connect to this to make people's life easier so, sure. yeah. um, are there any features that do things that like interface with public transportation or streets to try and reduce congestion or if there's a train that goes down or something to avoid that yeah, it's, uh, um, that's also one aspect of WeChat. So besides the smart campus and uh, a smart like Internet of Things, there's also smart city. So um, it's, it connects to, it's not, it's, um, the smart city is kind of part of the Internet Plus uh, initiative the government have initiated recently. And uh, that will connect to that has information about public transportation and you can pay your electricity bills, you can pay your gas bills, you can do, uh, make doctor appointments, everything on WeChat. Mm -hmm. Two more questions. Oh, over here. I have a question, and I guess this applies uh, to pretty much as we become globally more dependent on our mobile devices. What happens if you lose it? I mean, you know, it's like you've got everything. It's, it's so centralized that, uh, you know, you lose it, you've lost everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what uh, are there solutions for that? Is it like up in the cloud somewhere or? That's an excellent question we get from the users all the time. Sometimes my friends, like, they change, uh, uh, they upgrade their phone, and they forgot to back up their WeChat. And they're like, my life is just over. It's like, because <laughs> everything is on WeChat. <laughs> and so, um, any other phone, if you want to log into any other phone, then it's like the privacy is the Privacy and security is the number one thing for us. So if you want to, if any other people want to steal it, if any, um, if other people have your phone, they cannot log in. And uh, um, if you switch to a new phone, you need to bank up your old phone to the cloud and then um, download everything to your new phone. Yeah. <laughs> one more. I just wondered, um, because it sounds like you've worked in tech in the U.S. and yep. in China. Yep. Is the culture of the technology industry completely globalized, or is it very different in Silicon Valley from where, from China, or how is it different? Yeah. Um, yes and no. That's a question that, uh, um, like, Many of us who in tech industry ask ourselves all the time, and when we recruit from the uh, U.S. top campuses, we get this question all the time too. It's actually um, like extremely different because the stage of China, and um, uh, especially what interesting is in the I'll say last 10 or 20 years, 20 years ago or 10, 15 years ago, the um, U.S. and Europe in the technology field was really leading and everybody else in Asia is more kind of seeing what's, what's innovative here, how can we bring it to China, bring it to other parts of uh, Asia. And, uh, and these, in the recent five years, um, things have changed a lot. It's very different, the, especially in the mobile industry. Um, the innovation is way ahead um, in China 
and comparing to the rest of the world. And so that makes the fast, really, really fast development um, caused that the work environment is kind of very different. For a, a graduate students going to, for like a, someone who just graduated going to China, and uh, as um, uh, recently one of like, we, we had a recruiting event in Stanford, and in the discussion, it's everybody was saying that three, one year in China, it's what you learn is about like, it's kind of like three years here. It, you, uh, you are given so, just because um, the needs and demands for talent is so high and uh, the development is so fast and companies are growing like crazy. So the opportunity they give is extremely different. So um, uh, uh, one example our VP, one of the VP in Tencent video gave, it was uh, um, it's uh, um, the kids who are growing, uh, so the um, uh, college graduates grow up here and then you, are, you, you need to demonstrate yourself. For example, to, you already can take on the management role um, to become a manager, to get promoted, to be manager, to be director. But in China, often you are not even there yet. You're already given the responsibility of much higher level and then to force you to really grow. And so the development is really um, interesting. It's, it's different. And there's, uh, yep, I think. Veronica, <laughs> thank you so much. You know, she has helped us to have a glimpse of the future, which happens to be actually starting or evolving in China that we have a, a lot to learn from. So on that note, thank you very much for sharing it. And thank you, Monica, for bringing her. Thank you. Thank you.